Hello friends, Stacy here with a book update. Now, I know most book uh, vloggers on YouTube uh, tend to do monthly wrap-ups. I do not read enough to do monthly wrap-ups, so I thought it could be fun to go over with you guys my book update so far for 2020. So kind of six months instead of one. I'm hoping to ramp up how much I read, but I'm already super proud of how on track I'm doing. I hope you guys are too. So. Be sure to leave some comments down below about other books that you are reading. I know I asked recently on Instagram, I'm at one Disney penguin, about wait, some book suggestions. And I got so many suggestions, it was fantastic. It was all across the board of what people are reading. And that thrilled me and that inspired me to want to do a video to talk to you guys more directly about books. So please, in the comments below, tell me what you're reading. Let's talk about any of the books that I've brought up today. Um, and anything you want to chat about is fine. So I'm going to go over some of the books. Um, I do read a lot on Kindle and I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Generally, at least before quarantine happened and we were working from home, I would have a paperback book or hardcover at home, like a physical book. I would have Kindle that I would read on the train, like to go, taking with me, and I also have an audiobook that I read walking the dog, doing the dishes, those types of things. So usually there were three books going at once. Um, it's a little different now that I don't have to carry a book with me, so I can flip around a bit more freely. But anyway, let's start with the first book that I read this year. I decided at the end of last year that I was going to go through the entire Harry Potter series again, but via audiobook, because I've never listened to the audiobooks before. So the first book that I finished this year was actually Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and number two. I think that the audiobooks are are a whole new adventure. They take you through a whole new journey. It doesn't feel like reading the book again and it doesn't really feel like watching the movies either. It's it's something entirely different. So I'm having a blast listening to those. I actually think I'm on book five now, but the second one was the first one that I read this year. Even better in audio form. I wasn't as big of a fan of this book when I read it. It might actually be my least favorite in the series. No, I lied. The last book, of course, is my least favorite in this series, Harry Potter and the Prolonged Camping Trip. I'm excited to re to listen to it again, and because uh, I have not read that book since. I've read all of them, and I always, over again, and I always skip that one. Um, so I'm excited when I get there. I, I will let you guys know what I think of it again. I haven't read it since it came out. <laughs> I hated that book so much, because honestly, there's only two ways that series should have ended. Harry should have died or he should have been with Hermione and I will accept nothing else. Nothing. On to a book I actually own. The second book I read this year so far was Permanent Record, Edward Snowden's book. What? It's kind of creepy to just be holding up someone's face to the camera. Oh. Oh, it's weird on the back. Can you see? It's like pixelated. Um, I really wanted to read this book just because I wanted to be more knowledgeable myself of the whole whistleblower situation. Um, I, I thought it was okay. It was a bit boring at times because it's a bit of a biography mixed in with a, a telling of, of what happened. Um, so a bit, a bit slow at times, but still interesting and still good to hear from his own words kind of the situation. I think I gave this, I wonder if I should give my ratings of these books. I honestly, I'm never going to remember. I tried to be more giving with my ratings this year. And if I enjoyed a book, four or five stars, absolutely easy. Um, and I also tried to be more forgiving if I wasn't interested in a book to just put it down. So I have a few DNFs did not finish for you guys as well, which we can go over um, because Either I'm just not in the mood and it's time to move on, or this is just not a book that I'm going to finish and I just need to be done with it. I think we all need to be a little more forgiving of that, not just in books, in TV as well, I think. But yeah, so second book, Edward Snowden, Permanent Record. The third book I read this year was actually an audiobook I listened to called Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. It is the first in a series. Um, I'm hoping to read the second one soon, um, but this is about Spensa, who longs to be a pilot, like her father. It is a, a sci-fi um, set in space. I forget the name of the planet they're on. They call it something different. They reference history, they reference our history, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure that they're on Earth now that I think about it. I don't recall. Um, she longs to be a pilot, like her father. However, her father... Uh, had a situation in the beginning of the book where he was seen as a traitor 
Um, he turned on his fellow pilots and there's a whole situation there. So part of the, the story is about figuring out what happened, what really happened. Is it what Spencer knows? Is it what they've always told her? Is it something else? What's going on? Um, and the aliens that they're fighting, it's all a little mysterious. Um, but it's it's really really good and I know that Brandon Sanderson has a bunch of other series and novels that people really enjoy so I think this was a good introduction for me into his writing so now I know I can go ahead and read maybe Mistborn or something else and thoroughly enjoy it but I love this this was I think it's technically young adult although not the the usual young adults fantasy it is definitely more sci-fi um, so I can recommend it. I think I gave it five stars. I really enjoyed it. The audiobook was was phenomenal. I have found though that with a lot of audiobooks I have to speed them up. So I listen at like one and a quarter speed. Um, so I, I still did that with this one. I think I did that with all of them. I'm listening right now to Interview with the Vampire and that one's definitely sped up <laughs> a little bit. It goes through faster and it, I find that if they're going too slow I stop paying attention. Um, so this was one of the first ones I found that I, I, if I sped up, I could pay better attention to it. But yes, fantastic sci-fi story. Uh, ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger, if I recall, so I'm very excited to read the next one. Okay, so following the Harry Potter trend, the next book I read was audiobook of Harry Potter, number three. My favorite book, well, this was always my favorite book in the series. I think after rereading, we'll, f we'll find out if it's still my favorite book. So Prisoner of Azkaban came up next. Yes, it's purple. The audiobook is purple. Um, phenomenal. Again, I loved the audiobook. Not much more you can say about that, but I'd love to know from you guys what your favorite Harry Potter book is. I loved this one. I loved that it it, it stemmed out from, from the school scenarios. You got to learn more history and background. It was a little darker, which I really liked. A uh, little, little less everyday school scenarios. I don't know. And then after Chamber of Secrets was, was kind of a low, Prisoner of Azkaban was really, really exciting. Very thrilling. Next up is an audiobook, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I did not know what to expect going into this book, but I loved it. It is by Taylor Jenkins Reid, who also wrote, oh, Daisy Jones and the Six, which I have right, right over there somewhere. Um, and loved that one. That one was about a, a band um, phenomenal and so I was really interested in this book because I heard so many good things even though the topic didn't seem to grab me at first I'm really glad that I took the chance and read it because it was very good it is about a journalist who is interviewing this woman who was a famous movie star um, in the I want to say like the the 50s must, must have started in the 50s um, and her story and her seven husbands and her whole journey and why they are there because there's definitely a reason why they're there um, it was really really interesting. I highly recommend it. I, I think I also gave that one five stars. I probably gave a lot of these five stars because I was very excited. <laughs> so another book that I actually own, I love this book, Paperbacks from Hell by Grady Hendrix. He may know from My Best Friend's Exorcism. Uh, he just had a new one come out, the, the Southern Guide to Vampire Slaying, so Southern Book Club's Guide to Vampire Slaying, something like that. Um, which everyone is talking about now, but I love this book. This is a book about books. Uh, I seem to spend a lot of my time reading about books more so than reading books. I spend a lot of time on Goodreads. I do this with other things too, though, video games and movies and stuff. I <laughs> do more reading about them than actually indulging in them. This is just so pretty. Uh, so this is an entire novel full of book covers and... Uh, history of uh, 70s and 80s horror fiction. So I even shared some pictures from this book on my Instagram because some of these covers should just be, they're works of art. They should be in a museum. Uh, and Hendrick's writing is just phenomenal, of course. It's super interesting. He could write about anything and it would be amazing. Look at, I mean, look at these. Look at these. They're beautiful. They're so beautiful. Look at that. I don't even know what's happening. And not all of these books are good either. And I think that's what makes it fun. But he goes over kind of the social impact of something like Jaws. What was going on when Jaws came out? Why was it such a hit? What other books did it, did it spawn, you know? Because of course they wouldn't just stop at Jaws. And then, then they needed every animal in the sea to be a killer animal. 
of course. Um, but there's definitely some books that I've added to my list. Uh, both the Elementals and the Black Order series are now on my TBR because of this book. Uh, super fun, something to keep on the coffee table so that you can... Glance at, I'm never gonna stop showing pictures from this. So you can glance at the images as you go. I love this. I would love for more of this. I wonder, there must be movie books like this. I wonder if he could do more too. Horror in the 90s. But this is phenomenal. And because of this, uh, there's a certain publisher now that's republishing some of the best novels in here. Who's doing it? I don't remember. I'll put a link below if I remember. Um, but they're, they're re-releasing some of these novels so that you can pick them up and read them because they're still so good. <laughs> Next up, of course, finally, we got Soul Riders in English. Yay! So for those of you who don't know, I work for Star Stable. We produce a game called Star Stable Online. And we have a series of books about the Soul Riders, our main characters. Uh, they've been in Swedish. The third one just came out in Swedish, actually. Where are they? They're here. Udesretina. So there it is in Swedish. I actually like this one because it's super small. If you can see, the English one is much larger. But we had to wait forever for this book to come out in English. And so I haven't been able to read it because uh, my Swedish is not great. <laughs> I am not at reading level yet. Um, so I waited. And finally, it is here. And I have to say, I was blown away. I thought it was phenomenal. It was so exciting to finally have our soul writers come to life and we get to experience them as characters, as fleshed out people uh, in this book. This is a middle grade book, um, so it was quick to read, uh, but I didn't ever feel that it was, you know, like dumbed down or simplified. It was very much our soul writers in, in book form and I was so impressed. Um, the book itself is beautiful. So Helena's doing an amazing job. It's written by Helena Dahlgren. Uh, she's visited us many times. She's so sweet. I adore her. She was nice enough to sign a couple of these for me. One for me and one for my mom. Uh, and I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. So also highly recommended, even though I'm incredibly biased. Next up is a book I read on Kindle called A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I tore through this book. I read it in one weekend almost entirely in one day. <laughs> it was so much fun. It was like reading a true crime podcast in, in book form. If you guys read Serial, uh, listened to Serial, it was a lot like that. It is about a young girl who for a school project is investigating journalistically a murder that took place in her hometown and a lot unfolds. She ends up teaming up with the brother of the accused um, and, and all, all, everyone there's so many people involved. Everyone in the town knows about this. They're so intertwined because all of these kids were friends and she was friends with this person and that person. And it sounds complicated, but it's just, I feel that speaks to the realism of this because for also being from a small town, like my cousin is this cousin and best friends with this person and kind of everyone knows and she knows that there's so much more involved in this. It was super fun, a super easy read. It wasn't too in depth or too, I want to say dramatic, but it, it was a little bit dramatic. It is a mystery, a murder mystery, um, but it was a lot of fun and the sequel just came out. So that is definitely on my TBR for this year. Um, I hope to read it very soon. The reviews are so good so far, so we shall see, but also highly recommend if you like true crime. So to follow that up, I had Harry Potter book four, uh, which was super, super fun as an audiobook. I think they've all been super fun as audiobooks, but it was really cool to, uh, listen to it because I haven't read the book in a, in a long time, but to experience it uh, being read to me was fantastic. I enjoyed it far more this way than the first time I read it. I thought it was okay, but it definitely was not one of my favorites in the series. Um, it was kind of odd, different. They were doing something different. There were different characters. I don't know how I felt about everyone, but the audiobook I loved. It was, it was great. I feel like I was able to pick up on nuances that you don't necessarily get to in the book. Um, still fantastic, of course. Everyone knows Harry Potter, so <laughs> yeah. Um, but Goblet of Fire, it was the ending was just as sad, if not more sad, in in audiobook than than reading it. You, I still had that sense of even though I knew what was coming, it still hits you, and you're just 
dev it was devastating, of course. And then I think to the movie and how everyone feels in the movie and ugh, what an awful situation, <laughs> but such a good book. What is next? Okay, so yes, the next three books that I have are actually graphic novels. They are comics, Batman comics. So I downloaded the Comixology app on my iPad. It's fantastic. I love reading comics on it because you can go panel by panel and zoom in. They look beautiful. It's so sharp on my iPad. It was great. So it started with uh, the Court of Owls and then there's the City of Owls and Death of the Family. Both of these were fantastic. It was super fun. The whole Court of Owls concept is so intriguing. Um, and again, I loved reading it on my iPad. That was great. And I was able to get a free trial if they're unlimited so I didn't have to pay. Uh, because these, com these comments can sometimes be quite expensive. Um, I've been looking at, I've been wanting to read the Heavy Metal series so that I can read the Batman Who Laughs, which comes after the Heavy Metal ones, and they just go up in price sometimes, even on Amazon. It's like, sometimes they're up to $30 a piece, and I just feel like that's so much money, even though I'd love to have them. Um, so even reading through these, if I could pick them up at a, at a decent price later on. I would still love to have them, but I can recommend The Court of Owls. It was super fun, super trippy, very, very interesting, very intriguing. There's a lot going on. There's a lot, there's a lot of sidekicks. And of course, Batman, they're always offering to help. And he's like, no, I must do this alone. And it's like, you have an assortment of people, a whole team of people for you to use. And you never, ever want to. Why? Why? Anyway, those were the next three books on my list. Uh, also on my red list this year is The Toll by Neil Schusterman. This series was phenomenal. This is the third book in the series. Highly recommend it. Don't do what I did. Don't, don't do this, right? Excuse me, Patrick Bateman. When you buy a book in a series, make sure that you are buying the same, the same, from the same publisher, the same print. Do you see this height difference? Do you see this? They don't, st they stand weird next to each other. Don't do this. And then I don't even think the middle one is the same because this is textured, this is smooth, and then this one is short. So I did awful things. But at least the first two look <laughs> similar. Anyway, this series is phenomenal. If you haven't read Scythe, please do so. Um, this is basically way in the future when humanity has overcome everything because they allowed an AI to take over control of the world, basically. That is the Thunderhead. And the Thunderhead makes all decisions. It cannot be wrong. Um, so every decision it makes is in your best interest. You can talk to it about day-to-day -day things. It runs everything. But people are, are happy. They're content. They you know, they have their jobs still if they want, although no one wants for anything. And uh, they've conquered death as well. So they implemented the scythe system. So people are chosen as scythes and they uh, must glean a certain amount of people. They must kill a certain amount of people to replicate death in mortal days. So to make sure that the planet is not overrun because people can continue, they can live forever. They can live, you know, once you age to 60, you can basically turn a corner and your body is reset to look like you're 20. Um, so people can live forever essentially. And if you do die, uh, you can be revived. So they have the scythes who glean and when you are gleaned, it is permanent. You do not return. Um, and that to me is fascinating and the things that they have done with this whole scenario is amazing. I thought it was so good. It was such a fun read. It was an incredible, incredible journey, I would say. Um, and Toll, holy cow. This is the last one. There will be no more. And I did not know what to expect getting to the ending, but it's very satisfying. And I think that's very rare to say about a lot of media is that the ending was satisfying. This was satisfying. So please, please read these books. They're phenomenal. And I really hope to see them as movies in the future. That would be amazing. Finally on my list was a book I read on Kindle, The Merciless, which is the first in a series by Danielle Vega. I thought this was okay. This was probably one of my list. Maybe the one on my list I liked least. I mean, it was more fun than Permanent Record, but Permanent Record was important. So I mean, it was okay. 
It was very much like young adult horror. I would say if I were 12 or 13 and read this, it would have been super cool, perfect for 12 year old me. But now reading it, I don't know. It was easy, it was super quick. Uh, so I, in my review on Goodreads, I think I called it like a palate cleanser between some other non-horror books I was reading. I just needed a splash of horror and that was enough. But this is about a group of girls in the South, very Christian oriented and who would like to perform an exorcism. And I, I don't know, I don't think they do a good job. Obviously there's a lot more involved, clearly. It's not that straightforward. Um, but even when they were like pretending to do an exorcism, it was not, I don't know, they weren't giving it their all. It wasn't very convincing. It was confusing at some points. And then the ending, it got real wild and I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna read the rest of them. I'll have to see what the reviews are like. If people are like, wow, this is so much better, then I might go ahead, but I don't know. It wasn't, mm, it wasn't what I needed it to be, I guess. It wasn't convincing enough for <laughs> what it was. None of it is realistic, but it just wasn't convincing, especially the end. It started to get wild. And that's why I was like, okay, this is kind of fun, but a little too late maybe, I don't know. So it felt like it was trying to be very realistic three quarters of the way through the book and it wasn't realistic enough. It wasn't fun enough. And then the last quarter got super wild and didn't fit with the first three, I don't know. It was okay. It was fun. It was a good time, but, but not my favorite. Okay, so now we can talk about the books that I did not finish and don't think I intend to finish. The first one is 1984 by Orwell. Of course, I have it somewhere, but I did not feel like digging it out. I not, probably won't get rid of it, but I read it on, started listening to it, I should say, on audiobook, because um, I thought that would be a good way of, of getting through it. And no, no. Mm -mm. I liked <laughs> Animal Farm and so many people say so many great things about this book and how it's creepy and like today and uh, you know ominous and I expected it to be super impactful. It was not. It was not impactful. It was boring. There was not that many um, comparisons to, did, to, to today. I guess censorship um, in, in the way that this man's job is essentially to go through the newspaper and rewrite things so that they reflect what the party wants them to say, um, and discussions of newspeak, which is how they would like language to transition so that there's less words, so you would have good, then you would have ungood for something that's bad, or plus good for something that's, you know, awesome. So you don't need awesome and bad, you just need on and plus and in an efficiency sense, sure, that makes sense. I I'm okay with that, but I don't know. It was weird. I didn't get very far. I read the cliff notes for the later parts of the book just to see if I would be missing anything, and I don't think I am. I don't think I am. No. Um, another book that I did not finish was Don't Read the Comments. I was very excited for this book to come out. I got it on Kindle. Uh, it is about a streamer, a uh, video game, like like a Twitch streamer, but I guess she's not on Twitch. Um, her and this other guy who plays this game with her, he works with another group. I, I want to say like indie developers, they're developing a game of some sort. And I was very excited because it's about bullying and, and comments online and, you know, harassment. And oh, it was just very stereotypical. I don't know if it's because I, I come from that life. I, I work on a game, I live stream, I make YouTube videos. Um, I understand that there's harassment online and maybe this is impactful for like middle schoolers. I could see maybe reading it to younger kids to teach them that this is real, this happens and it, it's not okay. Uh, but for me, I don't know. It seemed very cliche and very, it wasn't in depth. Like I didn't feel the characters were had much depth, they weren't very unique, they were very cookie cutter, I guess is a good word. I don't know, I didn't get, I, I don't even think I got halfway, so maybe, maybe it gets better, I don't know, if you guys have read it, let me know, and it, if that sounds up your alley, like, I don't think the book itself was necessarily bad, like, it wasn't written poorly, but I definitely got bored, um, yeah, it didn't impress me, so I don't think I'll be continuing that one, we'll see. Another book I started and did not finish, however, I do intend to pick it up again, is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. 
Uh, this is her first adult fiction. Normally she writes young adult fiction. And I was very excited because it has to do with um, Yale and uh, secret societies and ghosts and <laughs> supernatural. It sounds right up my alley. Um, I started it and I think it was just the wrong time to have started it. I got this far because I just wasn't, it wasn't grabbing me. Oh, I have one of these cool bookmarks though. It's oogie boogie. <laughs> I love these bookmarks. I have a ton. They're from A Stranger Dream. I highly recommend them. They're adorable. Um, anyway, it didn't grab me, so I put it off for now. I'm sad I didn't get the British one with the different colored snake. This is the black snake. If you get it from the UK, it's got a co more colorful snake on it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think I would like to give it another go, especially now that uh, summer's coming up, my vacation is, I have a vacation coming up, and I'm stuck at home more, so I'm reading more, which is good. Um, I could try again, but it didn't grab me at the time. I don't know. And then I was hearing negative things in reviews, so I wasn't wasn't sold. So I put it down, which was a good choice. Read some other things and I might go back to it. Moving on, lastly, to my TBR. So <laughs> I bounce around books like nobody's business. I have a bunch of horror that I'd like to read. I have a couple here that I know that I want to get to, and one of them is the Warcraft Archive. Uh, which has some of the first books about uh, Warcraft, World of Warcraft novels. I really want to read more of because I love the stories. I'm a WoW nerd. I haven't played in, in a while, but uh, oh, you can't see them, but I have the collector's editions up there. Um, I'm a big nerd, but I haven't read any of the books, and I think this is a good place to start. It has some of the first ones, so I'm very anxious to get to that. And then also another book I've had for a while, uh, started and then had to put down. Um, it is House of Leaves by Mark Danielewski. Who knows? Him. He knows. Daniel knows. House of Leaves. It's huge. It's intimidating. It is written like a manuscript. And then some of the pages are just bizarre. Who knows? I believe this started uh, on the internet. I think it was just a series of notepad writings, very random, and then finally collected in physical form. Um, but I started this some time ago, did not get very far, and need to try it again, basically. It was, it was very, like, confusing at first. I wasn't sure what I was getting into. Now I've looked up, read a bit more. I'm not crazy. I did understand what was going on. I just doubted myself and now I need to try again. So then I have a number of books on my Kindle that I need to get to every time. A, I have a big wish list on Amazon and every time a book goes down to like 99 cents, I will buy it just so I have it in stock on my Kindle. So I did recently buy the first Dresden Files book. Uh, by Jim Butcher and I'm very excited to get to that because all I hear is phenomenal things <laughs> about the Dresden Files so I would like to give it a go um, and then I have some other random ones on there there's a couple non-horror books too and um, a lot of horror ones I would like to get there's some coming out soon um, the second Good Girl's Guide to Murder just came out so I'd like to get to that one um, and those change all the time I don't try and plan ahead what I'm going to read because um, I always change my mind. It changed my feeling. I don't know what I'll be interested in reading at the time. Maybe I, I want to read horror, but then I'm not in the mood or I'm not in a good place to read it, so I'll switch to something else. The same goes for romance and things like that. Sometimes you're just like, yes, I would love to read a romance novel right now. And that's when I'll pick up, um, I really want to read a Tessa Dare book. So I'll pick up one of those. Or then there's other times where I'm like, I don't want to read romance, I want to read horror or nonfiction or something. It depends what crosses my plate and that's why I'm always looking online. I'm always reading Goodreads, I'm always asking for recommendations because my interests change constantly. <laughs> constantly. But that also gives me the chance to talk to you guys about books and I don't do it that often so I hope you don't mind suddenly that I have a book video here on my channel but uh, I love it, it's important to me so I wanted to share it with you guys. I hope it's important to you as well. Um, I think that's it for now. You'll probably see another one of these at the end of the year when I have a little bit more books to talk about. We'll see. Um, but I hope that you're having lots of fun. 
uh, with your reading, with video games, let me know what you're up to. Don't forget to subscribe so you can check out more videos, hopefully more book videos, we shall see. <laughs> and turn on the little bell notification button, especially because, for instance, my Star Stable videos are for kids, marked for kids. So you might not always know when they are posted. I know that they can't have comments on them, which is unfortunate. There's a lot of restrictions now on those videos which makes me kind of sad. But this this one won't be marked for kids, so everyone can comment on here. Even if you have star staple questions, feel free to comment below, that's absolutely fine. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at one Disney penguin because I constantly talk about books and my job, star staple, all the time. <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys next time. Bye!